Okay, I'm a couple days into this practice assignment, and let's take a look at where we are right now. Um, the HTML just has a few elements involved, but we are looking at a couple interesting topics here. The first one is nested elements. You notice how these two are uh, tabbed in. They are children of this divider, or div box. So the h1 and the paragraph are siblings. Um, so they're on the same tier. So I'm trying to get you to think about the tabbing to, to make sure that we see how these elements are nested inside the opening and closing tags of this object, the divider box. We've also added some attributes. And the attributes we can see is the name of the attribute and the property uh, in quotes. So this word giving the class Jumbotron to this divider. And then we have a header and a paragraph. The paragraph is being used to contain this button, and the button also has a class associated with it. So that's all the HTML that we've done, and yet it looks like this, because of a few things. One, uh, we linked Bootstrap to this page. Um, we'll talk about Bootstrap next unit, uh, about what it's doing there. But we talked a bit that um, classes like Jumbotron and Buttons are built into Bootstrap. So once we're connected there, then these words have meaning and we get this uh, familiar sort of buttony uh, shape and look. Um, okay. The next thing we looked about is customizing our own CSS, not just using the Jumbotron and button that came with Bootstrap, but saying uh, making our own rules. And we talked about how the dot here at the start of a CSS uh, statement uh, uh, says look for something with a class. So that's what the dot says. It says find something with a class called Jumbotron and I want you to use this background of this Harry Potter image. We also talked about how we shouldn't use uh, outside links on our own projects. We're doing it just this time because we're, we're building a practice project that we're not keeping. But making other people host your images is, a very, is not nice. Um, and then, you know, we've been coaching through students have asked questions about well, how do I change your font? And that's not something I usually teach at this point, but we, we looked into that and we wanted to see how do we make the font uh, more readable. So we started saying, okay, look at the Jumbotron and find an H1 inside of there. And here are the rules. I want it centered. I want it uh, Harry Potter red. I looked it, up, looked it up. I want a very big font. I want it to use this font family that I in imported from Google Fonts. And then I also wanted a glowing shadow so it's easier to read. But you can see the, Harry, the picture of Harry Potter is being cut off. If I make this a little smaller, it would work. So I, we were talking in class about how do we make this uh, you know, a, a little better, uh, looking a little better. And one of the ways is to you know, set rules that make it bigger or, or set conditional rules. But, there are some things we haven't really talked about yet. What we're going to get started off with soon is adding some basic content below. We've been building up what's called the hero, a landing image with a call to action and a title for your page and maybe an, an explanation about what your page does. Um, and then a button to do uh, a, a critical piece of action that you want people um, to know is is the point of your website. For me, this is a, a website about um, a story structure of Harry Potter, so learn more about it. But if you were trying to sign up, or you, if you wanted people to buy things, or download a game, that's what that call to action should be. Uh, even if they're going to scroll past it for now, you sort of want to clarify what the point of your website is with a simple button. And then we're going to use a structure down below using containers, rows, and then columns. So we're going to talk about that basic structure. That's coming up next. Uh, and this is our first practice pro uh, project where we're just following along with what I'm doing in class, but you're starting to get a feel 
for how we organize the HTML and how the CSS applies rules to those things over in the HTML. Cool. Let me know if you have any questions.